Titan, Saturn's largest moon, and its mysterious magic islands is a complex world where it rains and snows methane and ethane, where organic molecules form a thick haze in the sky, and where lakes and seas of liquid hydrocarbons cover the surface. It is also considered a potential habitat for life, as it has a rich chemistry and a stable liquid cycle, similar to Earth's water cycle. But Titan is not without its surprises. In 2014, the Cassini spacecraft detected some strange features on Titan's lakes, which appeared and disappeared over time. These features were dubbed magic islands, and they puzzled scientists for years. What were they? How did they form? And what did they tell us about Titan's environment and its potential for life? In this video, we will explore a new study that suggests that the magic islands are likely to be honeycombed hydrocarbon icebergs floating on the surface of Titan's lakes. We will compare this explanation with previous ones, such as gas bubbles or floating solids, and we will discuss how this study contributes to our understanding of Titan's unique environment and its potential for life. So, if you are curious about this study, stay tuned and watch this video till the end. The first thing we need to understand is how organic solids form on Titan and how they behave on its liquid lakes. Titan's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen, like Earth's, but it also contains a small amount of methane and other organic molecules. These molecules are constantly bombarded by sunlight and cosmic rays, which break them apart and recombine them into more complex and heavier compounds. These compounds eventually form a thick haze that surrounds Titan, blocking most of the sunlight from reaching the surface. Some of these compounds also fall from the atmosphere onto the surface, forming a layer of organic dust and sand. These are the organic solids that we are interested in. Now, the surface is very cold, about minus 180 degrees Celsius, and it has lakes and seas of liquid methane and ethane. These lakes and seas are mostly located near the poles, where the climate is more stable and humid. The organic solids that fall from the atmosphere can land on these lakes and seas and interact with the liquid hydrocarbons. But how do they interact? Do they sink, dissolve, or float? This is what the researchers wanted to find out. They used computer models to simulate the fate of different types of organic solids, such as tar, asphalt, and pumice-like, on Titan's lakes. They varied the properties of the solids, such as density, porosity, and solubility, and the properties of the lakes, such as temperature, composition, and wind speed. They found that most of the solids would sink to the bottom of the lakes or dissolve in the liquid, depending on their solubility. However, there was one type of solid that could float on the surface, porous and low-density solids, like pumice on Earth. These solids could form honeycombed structures that trap air inside, making them buoyant and resistant to dissolution. These are the solids that could form icebergs on Titan's lakes. But how do these icebergs create the magic islands? Let's find out in the next section. The researchers found that porous and low-density solids could form icebergs that appear and disappear on the surface of Titan's lakes, creating the illusion of magic islands. They compared this explanation with previous ones, such as gas bubbles or floating solids, and found that it was more consistent with the observations and the conditions on Titan. Gas bubbles were one of the first hypotheses to explain the magic islands. The idea was that methane gas could be released from the bottom of the lakes due to geological or biological activity and form bubbles that rise to the surface. These bubbles could reflect radar signals and appear as bright spots on the images taken by the Cassini spacecraft. However, this hypothesis had some problems. For one, it was not clear what could cause such a large and sudden release of gas on Titan. Also, the bubbles would have to be very large and stable to survive the pressure and the wind on the lakes, and they would have to be very frequent and widespread to account for the multiple and diverse magic islands that were detected. Floating solids were another hypothesis to explain the magic islands. The idea was that organic solids that fall from the atmosphere could accumulate on the surface of the lakes and form rafts or mats that float on the liquid. These solids could also reflect radar signals and appear as bright spots on the images taken by the Cassini spacecraft. However, 
This hypothesis also had some problems. For one, it was not clear how the solids could stay on the surface without sinking or dissolving in the liquid. Also, the solids would have to be very thin and flexible to conform to the shape of the lakes, and they would have to be very dynamic and responsive to the wind and the waves on the lakes. Honeycombed hydrocarbon icebergs were the latest hypothesis to explain the magic islands. The idea was that porous and low-density solids that fall from the atmosphere could form honeycombed structures that trap air inside, making them buoyant and resistant to dissolution. These solids could float on the surface of the lakes and form icebergs that reflect radar signals and appear as bright spots on the images taken by the Cassini spacecraft. This hypothesis solved some of the problems of the previous ones. For one, it was consistent with the properties and the behavior of the organic solids on Titan. Also, the icebergs could vary in size and shape, depending on the amount and the type of solids that form them. And they could appear and disappear over time and seasons, depending on the temperature and the wind on the lakes. The researchers tested their hypothesis by comparing their computer models with the observations made by the Cassini spacecraft. They found that their models could reproduce the features and the dynamics of the Magic Islands and explain their origin and evolution. They also found that their models could predict the occurrence and the distribution of the icebergs on Titan's lakes and suggest where to look for them in the future. But what does this study tell us about Titan's environment and its potential for life? Let's see in the final section. This study contributes to our understanding of Titan's unique environment and its potential for life. It reveals how the organic solids that fall from Titan's atmosphere interact with its liquid lakes, and how they form honeycombed hydrocarbon icebergs that create the magic islands. It also shows how the icebergs change over time and seasons, and how they affect the chemistry and the dynamics of the lakes. The icebergs could provide a habitat for microbial life, if it exists on Titan. They could offer a source of organic molecules, a shelter from the harsh conditions on the surface, and a way to transport nutrients and energy across the lakes. They could also harbor pockets of liquid water, which could be essential for life, as it is on Earth. The liquid water could form inside the icebergs due to the melting of the trapped air, or the mixing of the methane and the ethane. It could also be stable for long periods of time due to the insulation and the pressure of the icebergs. Liquid water could host a variety of chemical reactions, and possibly biological ones, that could not occur in the liquid hydrocarbons. The icebergs could also affect the chemistry and the dynamics of the lakes, and influence their suitability for life. They alter the composition and the pH of the lakes by releasing or absorbing different organic molecules. They could also change the temperature and the circulation of the lakes by reflecting or absorbing sunlight and heat. They could also create waves and currents on the lakes by moving and colliding with each other. Finally, they could thus create a more diverse and complex environment on Titan's lakes which could enhance or hinder the chances of life. Of course, this study is not without its challenges and limitations. The researchers had to make some assumptions and simplifications about the properties of the organic solids and the conditions on Titan's lakes which could affect the accuracy and the validity of their models. They also had to rely on indirect and incomplete observations of the Magic Islands, which could limit the scope and the depth of their analysis. Therefore, this study is not the final word on Titan's Magic Islands, but rather a new and promising perspective on them. It opens up new questions and possibilities for future research and exploration of Titan and its potential for life. It also invites us to wonder and marvel at the beauty and the diversity of our solar system, and the secrets and surprises that it still holds for us. In this video, we have compared this explanation with previous ones, such as gas bubbles or floating solids. And we have discussed how this study contributes to our understanding of Titan's unique environment and its potential for life. We hope you have enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting about Titan's magic islands. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time.